Hi guys, so today let's have a look at pro compositing techniques on the iPad. Now a composite is an image made up of a number of different images. That's fairly self-explanatory and I'm sure Wikipedia will give you um, pages and pages of information on it. However, what you can use images that have been uh, composted together, that sounds a bit odd I know, but um, you can use them for book covers, you can make your own book covers, which is uh, my particular interest in this case, but you can use them for all sorts of things just to improve images. So let's have a look at how you do. Introduction. What is compositing? Compositing combines images from different sources into a single image, mainly for creative reasons. For professional results, the digital artist should consider each image initially and how they combine together on the page. If there is a disparity between the images, it can lead to the finished image having an unnatural look, inconsistent ambient lighting, colour differences, clashes in images, directional lighting variations, and images which are hard edged. So let's explore how to overcome such challenges. The images are supplied and downloadable from a couple of sources. This in fact is the iPad work through of the workbook for Affinity Photo desktop version. Now some of the controls, well a lot of the controls on the iPad of course are quite different to the desktop and there is no workbook for the for the iPad. So let's have a work through this and see where we end up. It's quite a long exercise and I've made a chapter headings which you'll find below in the description. So if you don't want to scroll through the whole thing or you want to come back to see how something was done just click on the chapter heading and YouTube will take you to that particular part of the video. So having downloaded the resource file, either from Affinity directly or from my website's download tab, the first step is to import the background image and the small brush pack. You need to have a project open already in order to import the brushes. So you can do this now with a temporary new file, or do it when you first set up the background. In other words, you can just import the background straight off and then import the brushes. The workbook project chapter um, is below there, https affin.co slash discovery and that will allow you to download, assuming you're registered with Affinity, to download the assets. So let's begin with loading the background JPG image from the resource pack. Select the plus sign to begin a new document, then select open from the cloud. Now locate the background JPG in the resource folder and import it. We can now load the brushes. From the brushes panel preferences, select import brushes. Navigate to your resource files, select and open Discovery AF Brushes. The brush set will be imported into the Discovery category in the Brushes panel. Your brushes will appear in their own category, so they're easy to find. Now in this section we're going to do some scene splitting. The first step in our process is to separate the base image into foreground, midground and background so we can work independently on each section. To tap the selection persona and from the tools panel choose the selection brush tool. Drag over the foreground to select it. Now with scene splitting we're going to make some modifications here. From the main toolbar, select Refine Selection. Then output as a new layer named Foreground. And you can see there the Refine Selection is not only on the Refine button in the, in the, um, in the Selection menu, but if you click on that button on the left hand side, it brings up a whole new 
context menu for you. <clears throat> and the one you want is new layer. And name it foreground. That creates a new layer in your layer stack. Call it foreground. Now repeat that for midground, which includes both the foreground and the midground. Set the border to about 10%. That's in your overlay file. Repeat for midground, which includes both foreground and midground. And you can see we've got there rename the layers to foreground and midground. So you've got foreground, midground, background. Three layers so far. Remember to switch the foreground and background layer visibility back on. When you, do, when you create those overlays, when you create those uh, refined new layers, as you've got there, they turn off by default. So you've got to turn them back on or you'll lose your entire image. Now, adding content. Open each of the two files that make up the content as separate files. Don't load them into your document, load them as separate files. And you can see the image there, I've got them open as separate files. Astronaut and Element. Now copy and paste each one into the project and position and size as needed. You'll find it much more comfortable if you copy them, then go back to your project, open the project and paste them in. It works a lot easier and, and they're much easier to resize and position rather than place them. Which works just as well, but I find copy and paste it gives you a lot of control over what you're doing. The content features added, <coughs> added by copy and paste, resized and positioned. Rename each layer as appropriate. Each of the elements have transparent backgrounds, so they don't need cutting out. And you can see you've got the astronaut, the element, the foreground, the midground, and the background. Everything's in place, even if it does look a bit strange at the moment. Now, toning. This is where we're going to begin our slightly professional view of all of this. Let's introduce strong directional lighting that will be the major focal point in the project, along with the light source itself and the astronaut. From the Tools panel, select the Pen tool, third from the bottom. Tap repeatedly on the page to draw a fan shape with no fill. So you start at the light source, over, go over to the astronaut's faceplate, tap there, down on his shoulder, tap his thigh, tap, ankle, tap, and so on, right around back to um, the element. Tap repeatedly on the page to draw a fan shape. Make sure fill is not on. You don't want fill. Name the layer light beam. Using the paintbrush tool, paint with the white smoke brush over the shape. Drop the layer opacity to 69%. On the layers panel, clip the brushed layer to the light beam by dragging. So you drag one into the other one and it clips it and you can see what you've got there. So that way it only affects that light beam area. Swap the astronaut to the top layer. Otherwise the light beam is blocking off some of the astronaut. You want the astronaut in full view. Give the light beam layer an overlay mode. So set its mode to overlay. Now we need to tone down the background. Add an HSL adjustment below the midground layer with saturation shift set to minus 82%. Now you can see you've got the midground and you can see the HSL shift adjustment there. Do this by selecting the background layer, then selecting the HSL in adjustment tools. To offset the grey look, use the rectangle tool to add a rectangle spanning the sky and with the gradient tool, apply a fill, 0, 12, 43, the, the colour range, across the shape. 
have it falling away towards 0% opacity and name the layer tint. Now you can see the color layers there. You can see the rectangle with the gradient tool, which is linear and going from top to bottom. Transparent nearly at the bottom, but not so transparent at the top. Lessen the whole layer opacity to 50% and set its mode to soft light. And you can see the slight difference there in the rectangle now. The various layer positions you should now have, and we still have some way to go. We've got the astronaut, light beam, element, foreground, midground, the rectangle, and the background. Now the mid layer and foreground uh, modifications. So the mid layer, add another HSL adjustment and clip it to the middle the mid level, mid level layer. Might set it to 14, minus 52 and minus 14 hue, saturation and luminance. This adjustment pulls down both saturation and luminance levels. In all cases you can adjust these levels to suit your look and feel. I don't know if I mentioned it yet but remember that the iPad um, color levels are somewhat different than the desktop. So some of your adjustments may need to change, not a lot, but a little bit, other, to suit your own needs. So next we'll adjust the foreground layer. Repeat as for the midground layer, but set the levels to 5.8, minus 55 and minus 59. Apply the adjustment. Next we will adjust the foreground layer. All adjustments are non-destructive as they are independent layers. You can alter them at any time later. The project looks dark at the moment, but now we can light it in a controlled way. <coughs> Excuse me, and you can see the layer panel there. Astronaut, light beam, element, foreground with HSL shift, midground with HSL shift, a rectangle with tint which has um, a gradient in it. Now lighting and masking as we move right along here. Unmasking to introduce lighting. By unmasking areas more light will be revealed and I'll use a soft brush for this. From the tools panel, select the erase brush tool. That looks, like looks like the eraser on the end of a pencil, about halfway down there, just below the brush. From the brushes panel, choose a round light brush. Now these are your basic brushes, and you can see it there, round light brush. They're different sizes. Now you only want a soft one of those, which is, um, and you can see in the uh, context toolbar there where it's, a very faint brush and I think that was probably the one that's one two three fourth from the bottom is the one I think I selected it's not in highlight there which is a bit of a nuisance but never mind from the brushes panel choose a round light brush and from the context toolbar reduce the flow to about 30 percent in fact you probably need to be a little less than that keeping hardness at zero Adjust the opacity to suit and choose black to erase with, but don't touch the image yet. With the foreground layers adjustment mask selected, erase away the adjustment under and in front of the astronaut to reveal the unadjusted foreground layer. To bring back some colour from the sun, erase on the HSL adjustment mask directly above the background layer in a similar way. So although the rest of the image is quite grey, we're bringing up the astronaut and his surroundings and the sun and its surroundings. You can see that activity on the, um, on the layer panel. As I've exposed more colour and light when erasing the foreground, I added an HSL adjustment clipped to the foreground layer that desaturated 
at minus 55% and removed luminance at minus 59% from just that area. You'll need to adjust your values to suit because as I mentioned the iPad produces slightly different results to the desktop. Now we're going to work on the astronaut. Our astronaut looks even odder than most astronauts do when they find themselves out on the moor fully suited up. He's a good example of tonal and lighting mismatch. It can be fixed however with a simple adjustment and then some erasing. Let's go to the next steps and you can see how odd he looks, quite a, quite a smoky dark background and a bright white astronaut standing in the middle of it. From adjustments, select the brightness contrast adjustment. Alter the settings to match the surrounding scene. Clip the adjustment to the astronaut to affect just the astronaut. Set the brightness to minus 100% and contrast to 68%. So you can see the astronaut is not quite so bright and white anymore. Using the same principle <coughs> excuse me, as used for the foreground, reintroduce light by erasing parts of the adjustment mask over the astronaut's spacesuit. Select the astronaut's brightness contrast adjustment layer. You can see it at the top there selected. With the erase brush tool, and you can see the width, opacity, and flow down the bottom there. You might even need to alter those slightly in your case. With the erase brush tool, concentrate on the front of the helmet, chest, legs, and boots. Because you've got a light source at the bottom, the bottom of the element. And that light source is, in theory, shining on the spacesuit of the astronaut. And it's shining on the front, not all around. You can see across his back and down the backs of his legs, it's still in dark shadow. Because you're lighting up the front of his suit. Helmet, chest, legs and boots. Duplicate the layer and continue with fine erasing. And you can see up the top there, in the layer panel, I've got a split toning adjustment, brightness and contrast, and a duplicate brightness and contrast, with just slight alterations on each one. Now, to fix the blue toning in the shadows, and believe it or not, there is a blue toning, I applied a split toning adjustment to the astronaut layer. Set the hue to 31.5, saturation 25%, the next hue 25.1, saturation 12 and balance 12. You can see across the bottom in the context toolbar there's a, quite a number of options there and you set each one to suit. Don't take my numbers as gospel but they are a good starting point. Now last in this section and I've enlarged the image a bit, erase around the boots using the grass brush on a new mask layer to blend the boots into the grass. Difficult to see here, but you'll see it when you do it. Now, I, you can see the grass there. I've kind of emphasized really long grass around his boots, so you can actually see it happening in the image. But that's up to you. You can en enlarge the image by dragging out with your finger and thumb and you have a lot of fine control over that grass brush. Don't paint it on, just dab the grass in where you need it. Now, shadows and highlights. With the foreground layer selected, add a new pixel layer and name Shadow 1 with a Multiply Blend Mode. Set it to Multiply Mode. Color pick from the darkest grass area, or in RGB, select 18, 13 and 7, with the paintbrush set as a soft brush with 20 to 40% opacity 30% and hardness, 20 to 40% opacity and 30% hardness. Paint in the shadow of the astronaut, then use the erase brush and the grass brush to paint back grass-like detail.
highlights are added to the grass in front of the astronaut in two passes, first by painting, then by erasing with a grass brush. So add a new pixel layer named Highlight with an Overlay Blend Mode. With the paintbrush tool, paint with a white 64 pixel round light brush to add a soft highlight around the astronaut. With the Erase Brush tool, paint over the soft highlights with a white 20 pixel grass brush. That adds a bit more grass around the area and highlights the shadow. Group the shadow and highlight layers together and name the group Shadow Highlight. Now adding mood. We're getting towards completion, but we need a bit of mood. And nothing sets the mood better than mist and smoke. Let's soften the edge between the foreground and midground using some moody mist. With the midground layer selected, add a new pixel layer. And with the paintbrush tool, paint with a white smoke brush along the foreground and background division and reduce the layer's opacity to 40%. Do the same with the second layer inside the foreground layer. Now call the layers Mist 1 and Mist 2. Now I've possibly overemphasized emphasize the smoke and mist in that first one, but I need to do that so you can see what's happening on here. You should adjust that to, to satisfy your own um, design ideas. So before moving on, let's add some smoke and steam around the element. That's the triangular, or the odd angle, the angular shape floating in the sky. Add a pixel layer to the top of the stack and name it Smoke. Paint with the smoke brush, then apply a screen blend mode and lower the opacity to about 50%. Let's add some steam around the element. For steam, create a group called steam, placed under the smoke layer, which should contain at least two pixel layers containing more widespread brush strokes, using the same brush with soft light and lighter colour blend modes respectively on the two layers. And you can see on the angular shape, I've got steam appearing around it. Now, steam or smoke, it's up to you, but it looks mm, vaguely like a bit of steam. To complement the surrounding mist, the light beam needs to be more diffuse. So select the light beam layer and apply a Gaussian blur at about 6 pixels. You can adjust that to suit. The various layers are shown now in the layers panel. And there's quite a bit there, some in groups, some not. So we've got smoke, steam, the astronaut, light beam, element, shadow 1 and 2, some highlights, mist 2, foreground, mist 1, midground, tint, and so on. Now I might add at this stage, if you haven't got a lot of memory in your iPad, it might be slowing down. So take your time with it, because there's a lot of information in this and you may find your iPad slowing down a bit. Now the finishing touches, we're nearly there. We need, we need to add image depth. At the moment the image appears slightly flat, so let's give it a sense of depth. We choose layers, then add a new pixel layer to the top of the stack and select Add Live Filter. That's in your Filters panel, Add Live Filter, and use Gaussian Blur, and set it to 1.2 pixels, which seems very small, so you may have to adjust that slightly. Drag the filter layer into a position just above the mid-level mid layer, and you can see I've got it there. The Live Adjustment layer is just above mid-ground down in the, you start at the top and then when you've got it working, drag it down to just above mid-ground. Now making stars. In this we will add a blue haze under the light along with some stars. 
using a file that contains both. Open the Styles PNG in Affinity Photo. Copy and paste its layer content onto your project file. Position and size it over the light beam, just like you did with the resources right at the beginning. Name the layer stars and give it a screen blend mode and 80% opacity. Now apply a mask layer and erase with the erase brush and a black smoke brush, 79% flow and 0% hardness around the image edges. And you can see the image edges are sort of smoked away there. Add a couple more stars with the star brush if you wish. The stars are indicating, I believe, another dimension. Now accentuating light sources. Let's add some glare to the elements, light source and the sun. Add a new pixel layer called glare and sun. With the paintbrush tool, paint over the light sources with a white round soft brush set to 0% hardness. Apply an overlay blend mode and lower the opacity to soften the result. Switch to the sun layer and do the same. And you can see it's, it's slightly harshened the light coming from both the sun and the elements light source. Now tonal fine tuning, we're just about there. Tonal adjustments and filters applied to the top of your layer stack affect the whole composition. So make sure all layers are deselected. If you still have a layer selected, just flick your finger or, or a pencil to the left and, un, and it'll unselect it. Select adjustments. From the list apply the following. Curves adjustment to lighten the shadows so the image corners aren't so dark. And it's, it's difficult to set there, but you can see the X and the Y are set to 0.43. I've got the bar just up from the bottom and a slight curve in the middle. And that, that reduces the shadows so the corners aren't so dark. Tonal adjustments and the filters applied to the top of the layer stack affect the whole composition. Set the white balance to warm up the image. 17% and minus 5. And you can see the adjustments on the side there. White balance is the bottom one. And you click on that, you've got the context toolbar to suit and you can change that. And you can see 17% for balance and minus 5 for tint. The next one is split tone adjustment to stylize and remove the orange color cast. You might need to experiment with that one a little bit because it does change some of the colors if you're too heavy handed with it. Now the last one, create a live unsharp mask filter, making sure all other layers are deselected. So with everything deselected, go to Adjustments and click on Live Unsharp Mask. Which is, I must have moved off the list. I've scrolled off the list there, but there you go. You'll find it. And that's the end. Now this was quite a long exercise, and if you've worked your way through it, you're doing really well, because it does take a while. Save it and come back to it. Do each chapter at a time if you like. There's lots of them, and you can see them in the, in the description on the YouTube description panel. That completes the composting ex compositing exercise. It's getting mixed up with gardening there. Composting. Com composting. What a word. Compositing exercise. As you now realise, it's no five minute project and there's still much fine tuning to be done. You can reach even higher levels of quality as your skills improve. The iPad means you can take your work anywhere now. And there's a reasonable image on the right hand side there of an almost finished product. But I've got lots of work to do there yet. 
um, but that's okay. That's what it's all about. So enjoy. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're not already. Click on the thumbs up to give me a like and tap on the bell and you'll be notified when new videos appear. I really appreciate it. Bye for now.